So in the study of cities and environment, again, summarizing a, a very broad field in very simple terms, but just for the sake of orienting us in our inquiry, I want to distinguish two conceptual frameworks. The first one, which is on the slide, an externalist or dualist framework. And the second one, you won't be surprised, is a processual, relational, dialectical framework. So let me explain the distinction. The externalist framework or the dualist framework implies, it's basically this first conception of nature as pre-social. It presupposes that first conception of nature. So from this point of view, the city is interacting with nature and it's appropriating materials like food, water, energy from nature, from the environment. And then the operations, the building and development of the city externalizes some of its waste products on an external natural world, the hinterlands. So in this particular model, it's totally externalist. And what I mean by that is that nature is external to the city. The city is human and social and nature is non-human and asocial. So that's a model that's presupposed in a lot of liter the literature. To some extent, we might ask whether Abel Woolman in his metabolism article is working with this model. Mumford is not, although it's, it's, we're gonna talk about what, what is his model because it's actually pretty complicated. But that's one model, and it'll become more clear. Let me contrast it to the other one, the dialectical relational one. So here, it's basically everything is metabolized um, nature. The city and the non-city. City building, it's not interacting with an, a, a non-human nature. City, city building itself is a way of reorganizing, we might say of rifting, in the sense of the metabolic rift, the Stoffwechsel, the metabolism of life, it generates particular pathways of metabolic transformation. So instead of thinking of the city as outside of nature and interacting with it, we need to think about the process of city building as a way of organizing or reforming, rechanneling the metabolism of life. So again, remember, please, the discussion from last time on David Harvey, and I had a whole long discussion about pro the city as process, not as thing and how it's, how it's getting out of that process, on of that thing ontology and thinking about processes. This is the same terrain here, but now thinking about it in relation to the non-human. So it's urbanization processes generating particular forms of socio-environmental metabolism rather than the city interacting with a non-human nature. So from this point of view, the city does not act upon nature. We're dealing with the process of urbanization, which metabolizes human and non-human material, energy, and labor. So I made that diagram. I'm kind of, I kind of like it. What do y'all think? Um, anyway, I don't know if the diagram really captures it very well, but I just wanted to get at the idea of there's a dynamism. Like in this diagram, so in this, di sorry, in this diagram, basically city is here and that's human and social and nature is over here. There's a dualism. It's like you could draw a line. You could draw a line right here. You know, it's, it's like there's a barrier and it's just constantly interacting across that barrier. And what I did here is basically, there's no, there's, it's not that everything is the same, but simply that everything is interconnected. It's not that there's no difference between human society and a mountain or human society and I don't know, a, a, you know, a school of fish, you know, in a pond or in the ocean. Of course there is. There's all kinds of differences in the world. So I'm not trying to flatten everything into the same and just saying, oh, it's all X. No, the point of this framework, this dialectical, relational, processual framework is to say that we need to look at the interconnections instead of presupposing that we have like two billiard balls that are interacting with one another. There, there's, there's intermeshed co-evolutionary relationships that then need to be unpacked. So again, recall the point I made a few minutes ago about historical natures, historical environments. This is what I'm trying to get out with my little squiggle of a diagram here. The idea that like, urbanization co-evolves with various kinds of historical environments. The historical environments, whether it's the oceans, whether it's the atmosphere, whether it's the soil, co-evolve and co-transform through the ways in which urbanization, city building processes um, and, their, and, and their metabolic requirements contribute to transformations of the water, of the air, of the atmosphere and of the soil and much more.